we start up in the lab and we take spores that we've collected and we put them in uh, YM broth and in shakers. This is uh, the seeds, if you will. Uh, if, if you want to look at it in the context of fungal farming, uh, we get the seeds in there and they need to stay in there for about 24 hours. We go over to Lincoln Way, get some thin stillage. It comes out very hot because the thin stillage is actually a post distillation product and bring it back and put it into our column. Once the column has reached the appropriate temperatures, it is ready to ha put, have the seeds put in. We'll inoculate the thin stillage with the seeds with basically no modification to the thin stillage itself. After we put the fungus in, then we are able to aerate the fungus because it's, it's an aerobic organism, it needs air. This is gonna be the primary uh, energy that goes into our process is just aeration. And the fungus will, in 24 hours, grow to a harvestable quantity. So um, how long has this been growing? Oh, about 40 hours. 40 hours, okay. Temperature is about 31.5 Celsius. Okay. It seems that 40 hours might be around That's the optimum time to harvest based on biomass yield and wastewater cleanup. I always like to taste the product. You tell me something about contamination. <laughs> Once we've grown up the fungus, our next step is we need to harvest the fungus, take it out of the liquid suspension. And we're able to do that by uh, just basically taking it over a slanted screen. And once we've gotten that done, we take the slightly dewatered biomass, put it into polypropylene bags, which allows the water to escape, but no fungal biomass. This material is, is slightly dewatered, but there's still a lot of moisture in it. So this filtration method will allow us to remove a lot more water from our material. Then we put it in uh, something we like to call the fungifuge. The fungifuge is basically just a washing machine converted into a centrifuge, at which point we can get the uh, moisture down to about 75%. And as we turn this washing machine on, the biomass will form a layer around the bowl and it'll form an even thickness, which will then allow the solids to be retained and liquid to pass through the bags. This is uh, essentially the thin stillage containing some fungi, but I mean, uh, it really looks the same as the thin stillage. And in my right hand, I have the effluent after the fungi have been removed with the screening process. So you can actually see the improvement in quality. And of course, there's much more than meets the eye in this removal. Most importantly, we remove uh, with the fungal process uh, certain impurities that are undesirable for recycling the, uh, the effluent back to the fermentation process. And that includes glycerol, lactic acid, and acetic acid, which are microbial byproducts from the original yeast fermentation, which build up otherwise and inhibit the yeast fermentation. But these filamentous fungi, our rhizopus, they just love the, uh, these materials, and uh, these are then consumed and turn into more fungal biomass and carbon dioxide. Obviously we can't stop here. We need to process the, the biomass all the way down to a food, like a food grade product. Selencore kindly let us use their microwaves to dry our fungus. And our target is about 10% moisture, 10 to 15% moisture there, at which point it should be able to prevent most microbial growths. Once you're done, and it's about at 10, 15% moisture, you notice it almost has like a grape nut consistency. But yeah, this is what we like to call myco meat. Pretty wholesome, and it tastes good. And quite nutritious. Mm -hmm. We've actually had some tests done on the, bio, the dried biomass itself, and it turns out to be about 33% protein content, amino acid content, and about 19% fats, which is very favorable, especially for young chickens. Pigs, they can get a lot of their energy from fat, helps them grow properly. Also, lysine is a, an essential amino acid. In the case of our study at this point, we're just focusing on the animal feed trials, but we like to uh, let it be known that we also feel that it has a huge potential in being a highly proteinaceous source of human energy.